Good evening, South Brunswick. We are live from Crossroads North. Uh, we're going to restart the meeting. I know there were some problems with sound, so we're going to call the meeting in order and please rise for the salute of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Board of Education recognizes the value of a uh, wrong, wrong sheet. The New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend a meeting of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the board secretary has caused notice of this meeting, including date, time, and location to be posted in the South Brunswick Public Library, the board office filed with the township clerk and communicated to the Home News Tribune and the Star Ledger. Mr. Pulaski, roll call, please. Dr. Raja Krishna. Yes, sir. Mr. Raymond Keener. Mrs. Joyce Mehta. Here. Mr. Mike Mitchell. Present. Dr. Stephen Parker. Here. Mrs. Smitha Raj. Yeah. Excuse me, Dr. Smitha Raj. Yeah. Mrs. Lisa Rogers. Present. Mr. Joseph Scaletti. Here. Mr. Barry Nathanson. I'm here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Can I motion to approve uh, tonight's agenda? So moved. Moved by Dr. Parker. I have a second. Second. Second by Mrs. Rogers. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Moving along, uh, approval of minutes of January 7th. 2021 and executive minutes of January 7th, 2021. I have a motion. motion. Moved by Mrs. Rogers. I have a second. second. Who, excuse me, who second? Mr. Mitchell. Uh, Mr. Mitchell. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Moving along the report of student representative. Zoya, is she on? She's here. I just have to allow her the opportunity to talk. Thank you. Hello, oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Zoya. Hey, hello, everyone. Good evening. I know this is kind of weird. It's like a disembodied voice, but hopefully I will be able to be there in person next week. So, as always, I'm going to be starting with activities. So the Parent Doll players hosted their fall play virtually this year, and it was a huge success. A bunch of people came and watched, and it was overall a really great experience. SB Earth is hosting Environmental Commission guest speakers. And this is a really great opportunity for our students to interact with people who are knowledgeable about environmental law at both the state and local levels. Public Health Club is also hosting a guest speaker, Dr. Trevetti. He is an emergency they are an emergency room physician who will discuss heart attacks, how the treatment evolved over the years, and this is all in honor of Heart Disease Awareness Month and the annual Go Red Day that takes place in February. Amnesty International is hosting an Art for Amnesty event. Um, Black um, South Brunswick High School is celebrating Black History this Black History Month this month by creating informational Instagram posts to recognize and honor black leaders and voices. The class council of 2023 is working with local business, board and brush to throw a DIY virtual event. The cost of attendance is $30 and it includes paint, brushes, a, wood, a piece of wood to decorate and overall it's a pretty great deal and definitely a steal. So another thing I want to mention is the SBHS Campus Center. This is an online site. It's a Google site. And if you type in SBHS Campus Center, it'll pop up. 
And basically it has everything you really need to know about school. It has the schedule, it has all resources, it has mental health resources, um, school supply list, all the policies in school. So if you're ever confused about anything or need anything, definitely check out the SBHS Campus Center for any information. So this month is Heart Disease Awareness Month um, and uh, the Student Council is also helping to celebrate it and raise awareness about this disease. We will be creating a um, collage of paper hearts that we draw and we will be hosting this kind of social media campaign in order to raise more awareness about it. And we also have this really interesting and unique event that we're doing this year and it is Valentine's Day. We're celebrating Valentine's Day, but with kind of a unique twist, we are celebrating Palentine's Day. So basically how this works is that we created two separate Google Forms, a form for teachers and a form for students. And basically there are a bunch of questions on there from serious to silly, like what kind of bread do you like? And we will be using all that information to create matches. Now these matches can be either individual or in the group. And it's basically just a really great way for students and teachers separately, of course, separate forms to meet new people and create new connections. It's just a way to, again, make connections during these socially distant times. This month, South Brunswick unfortunately lost a student, Emily Merlo. She was a senior at the high school and her loss is truly heartbreaking. She was a beloved member of the community. The SBHS Bridge Center, this is a really difficult time and we want to make sure any student who is struggling with her loss and needs help um, coping has all the mental health resources they need. You can access these mental health resources by reaching out to your counselor, visiting the SBHS Bridge Center, it's always available, or checking out the SBHS Campus Center wellness page that also has a bunch of people you can reach out to and a bunch of different resources. So now I will be talking a little bit about the athletics. I will just be giving a few of the games that are coming up. So on Tuesday, February 16th, girls basketball, bowling and boys track is going against JP Stevens. On the next day, our swim team is going against East Brunswick. The day after, on Thursday, boys basketball is going against Monroe. And on Saturday, boys basketball is going to, against Saraville. Just another reminder, spring sports forms are being accepted now and are due no later than March 1st, 2021. Thank you for your time. That's all for my report tonight. Thank you, boy. Before I switch it over to Scott, I you know, uh, Zoya brought it up. I was going to ask the board for a moment of silence for Emily, who uh, passed away. And like Zoya said, she was a uh, senior at the high school. And what a lot of people don't realize is that she has, she her family has ties to the district. The, her stepfather, I believe, works for the district. Her grandmother used to be one uh, a nurse at Indian Fields or Dayton. Uh, and uh, I, I want to extend on behalf of the board to the family my deepest sympathy. So please, uh, a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, Moving along, uh, reporter superintendent, Mr. Federer, it's good to see you. All right, it is good. And I want to start by welcoming our three new board members to the dais, although it's a little odd. Smitha <laughs> up there has the high honor seat. Welcome. Michael, all the way at the end over there. Hello, Michael, give a wave. Michael Mitchell and Raja, all the way at the other end. So we have all the corners of the, of the gym covered. Welcome, it's great to see you guys in person and welcome to the dais. You've already been welcome to the board. So good to have you here. Um, anyway, we're back everybody, we're back, we're in person. Um, we had, of course, the day we're supposed to come back, we have our biggest storm in what, a few years? Since I think like 2013 maybe? Um, followed by again, now we're getting little smidgens here and there. 
Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, something that was shared with me today. So we have an administrative council meeting every day, and I don't think it hit home just how meaningful it was for these kids uh, until you hear it from someone. And we had a, one of our police officers, I'm not going to name uh, the person, was at our meeting this morning, and I think that David, Kim, and Jen would share the, the heartfelt thanks. And when you have a police officer tell you that the teachers and the paras and the administrators are the heroes, it really shows the meaning. And uh, I have to say the same. Our teachers, our paraprofessionals, custodians, our bus drivers, our administrators, everybody, our sec everybody, to be able to handle this, um, it's difficult. I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is easy. Teaching kids, I think, that they're, I think the, the elementary folks call them uh, homies and zoomies, roomies and zoomies, roomies and zoomies. They were, have to teach roomies and zoomies at the same time. It is just not the best scenario, but it is the scenario we have. We are very glad to have our kids back. And if you see those faces and you see the great pictures that have been going around, um, this is very proud of our families and most of all our staff for making this happen. This, this is just not easy. Uh, and I want to thank uh, that police officer for, for bringing that home and telling us how meaningful to their family it is as well. I'm going to talk about a little hiccup. If you remember our first two days, uh, you might have been in one of the schools where we had some tech issues. Um, those were fully resolved. There should be no tech issues. And we thank our incredible tech department, some of them are here tonight, for doing an amazing job of, of working with our Comcast vendor and getting that fixed so quickly. So we are back in full strength. Thank you again to all of those. I do want to remind our families, we need everybody to fill out those forms every morning. Um, we have had a few uh, forget. We need that to be 100% every day. And I need one more thing. If your child has been exposed, possibly exposed, has any symptoms of all, respiratory, or any of the ones that we've sent home, please just keep your child home and call the school nurse. We need to work together on this. It's vitally important. So please remember that. Once they're here, Remind your students to wear their masks and that they are not to go near anybody else. I know with little ones it's tough, but we have to keep that coming from home and from school, and we will change behavior, uh, hopefully quickly over time, but quickly so that we are uh, able to focus on the learning, which is the part we want to get to. Um, I do want to talk about one thing so our families hear this and our board hears this. Um, we have some hot spots, that's what I call them, where we have our numbers a little high. We have some of our elementary schools that have numbers that are getting very close to needing to cohort. Cohort means the students would only be able to come half the time. This is because of space. So right now, there are certain places where if a parent who is currently has their child home virtually, it is possible that if they ask to come back live now, we would either have to cohort that whole grade or school or move the child to a different school in order to accommodate. So. You have to understand, this is the trickiest part of all this, but safety is going gonna, is gonna to dominate and come first. So just putting that out there to the board, that this is something we are looking at. It is something that may have to happen, but we certainly don't want that to happen if we don't need to. So we're looking at alternatives. Uh, and lastly, you know, today was another day of snow. The problem, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I would not have called the snow day last night today. What I would have done is I would have waited till about 5 o'clock in the morning and then see where we were and probably call it a delay. Uh, the delay is not something we can do, so it's kind of forced our hand to make decisions we might not have otherwise made, um, but that is the story. Uh, for people that are wondering, you know, why would we have called the snow day? Some, you know, basically, in a good year, a snow day is seen by 50% of the people as a good idea and 50% think I'm crazy. That's just the way it goes. I'd imagine people woke up this morning, it wasn't necessarily as bad as it might have been, but wait until 5 o'clock, I still at that time probably would have had to call a delay, which I cannot do. So we're erring on the side of caution. We do not want to add safety issues regarding snow and ice and our high schoolers driving in that and our buses driving in it. So we took advantage of the virtual opportunity. We do know that is um, we've had ups and downs. I mean, we're not going consistent. Tomorrow we come back in person, and then Monday we're off. And we're off because it's 
uh, um, Washington's birthday, the President's, birth, President's Day. So we just can't seem to get it going. But next week, hopefully, we'll have four straight days and go on uh, uh, from there as well. So tonight, I just want to go over a few things. Tonight, we have the National Merit semifinalists, 15 students who have just knocked it out of the park on the PSATs. And uh, Mr. Varela and his team put together a great um, visual for us tonight. It's a little different. Normally, we have all the families in the audience. They're not here. And normally, Mr. Varela gets up by there, and he, and, he, and he just manages a great evening. But tonight, it's been filmed in advance, and we'll be showing you that as well. Um, reminder to everybody, Wednesdays, every Wednesday is early release. We'll continue to remind you on Monday and Tuesday, but just keep remembering, Wednesday is early release. Um, this is a big topic. Now, I want to go over a couple big topics with the board. So one of the big topics that has come about um, is the high school start time. High school start time has been a topic. We have heard from children. We have a petition. We've heard from uh, families that would have just preferred for us to be able to keep that 9 o'clock start time. I've explained it many times that it was not possible in our current state due to transportation and the legal requirement of the board to transport students. Uh, while our numbers are small in the high school, we'll be reevaluating that in a few weeks. As of right now, there's nothing we can do for right now. And uh, I'm going to be honest. I, I, know, I know board members received kind of what I'll call nasty grams from a parent or two. Um, there's just no reason for that. Uh, board, board members are not trying to do something. We, we, are, we are in a pandemic, and we are trying to manage all of this. So the fact that we cannot start at 9 o'clock I look at it this way. It was a gift for half of the school year to have it. We're thrilled that we were able to do it. But here's the bigger picture. What happens going forward? Because this year, we're not going to be able to get there that I, I don't believe. However, it's a great conversation. It's a great topic for us to consider. I believe, Barry, you've asked um, Mrs. Mehta, who will be leading the charge to uh, work with the community, with the faculty, with our admin, on what's possible. Uh, we provide an outline to get us started, and you'll be hearing more about that shortly. So what I want to tell the, the, the students as well as the families, it's not that we don't want to. We do know the research. We do know there's a lot to be said about a later start time for teenagers. This is just the reality of our current situation for now, but worth looking at for the future. So just know that that's on the horizon. You'll hear more about that in the coming uh, weeks and months. And uh, thank you, Joyce, in advance for your, your willingness to take on that, that role. I want to keep going and just, I know I have a lot, but uh, the calendar, everyone loves the calendar. The calendar is on the agenda, folks. We're voting on the calendar tonight. Uh, I'm not going to go over the whole calendar. I'm just going to say really easily, it's about as standard a calendar as there is. There's no tricks. There's nothing weird. There's nothing new. The only thing that's a little troublesome but has nothing to do with a choice is our first day back won't be until September 9th for kids. Staff would be back earlier than that, September 1st and 2nd, but the, we have um, two days of Jewish holidays attached to Labor Day, so it's a bit of a, a late start. Um, other than that, we maintain the November week off uh, for closing schools, yet we'll have staff PD as well as our conferences and then teachers' convention. After that, it's pretty standard with the last day of school being June 24th, which is a Friday, and uh, spring break being April 11th through the 15th. As of today, we are maintaining three snow days in the calendar because we have been told as of right now, there is no rule that will allow us to do what we're doing this year, which is have a virtual school day next year. That could change. If that changes, it could have adjustments to the calendar. But for right now, that is the calendar, the important dates September 9th, first day of school for kids. June 24th, Friday, last day uh, for students. Spring break, April 11th through the 15th. I think those are the heavies on that, and uh, that'll be public uh, after tonight. Well, it's probably already publicized, but it'll be public, and uh, Marianne Murphy will get that out to everybody once it's approved, if it's approved tonight by the Board of Education. I'll keep going. Uh, elementary semester one report cards. Um, so those are posted through Genesis Parent Portal. If you have any trouble, please reach out to the Genesis Online Help Desk, and we'll get you, we'll get you all set up. I'm going to share something that was one of the more disturbing, upsetting 
things. And this pandemic has produced many for many different reasons. But we heard from Zoya and, and uh, President Nathanson that we, we lost a student. And um, Emily had a, a virtual, it was a virtual um, viewing and, and, and memory uh, for Emily. I can't imagine I'm telling you this, but it was bombed. It was Zoom bombed. And it was horrible. I, I have never seen something more atrocious behavior. All I can tell you, if you know anything about who did this, it is absolutely in your best interest to inform the police and the high school. I can be honest as I can. When the person is caught, we expect the worst of charges to be filed that are allowed to be child, uh, filed, and the school will be taking the full extent of our ability for consequences associated with really the most horrific behavior I could think of. I feel horrible for the family. If it's not hard enough losing a, a family member, a child, to have that happen, uh, our, our thoughts go out to them. Again, I would ask the entire community, share if you know anything about who did this. And I, I, I truly hope they're caught and our police have been working on it since it started, since it happened. And uh, again, if you would have seen the posts, I hope you didn't. It, it's unbelievable that that happened. Uh, it, it makes you really think about what's going on. Um, anyway, uh, some, some, I gotta move, move it back to some positives. Um, our Winter Parent Academy series, we have upcoming workshops on social justice. It's by level. It's geared towards elementary, middle, or high. The elementary level is February 9th, and there's still time to register for the middle, which is the 23rd, and the high school is March 9th. Amazing, please, please join that. There'll be an additional parent academy also about making your child's gaming interest an ally. I don't think my parents had that one when I was using Atari and in television. <laughs> Sorry, I date myself, but that's what we had, Atari and in television. And I couldn't wait for the next game to come out. You know, there was no online, it was just me and my friends playing. But uh, it's a big deal now, and it's a different world, and a uh, great workshop. I'm excited to hear that one and, and hope the parents will be able to get to that one. <clears throat> so I'm gonna close um, with a few positive pieces of information to share. So we are recipients of the College Board's 2020 AP Computer Science Female Diversity Award for expanding young women's access to the AP Computer Science. This award <coughs> acknowledged over 1,100 schools for their work toward equal gender representation during the, during the last school year. And that's just a great honor, so we, we applaud the high school for making that happen. Here's another great piece of information. Colin Lee, he's a junior at our high school, and, and he's also the principal viola of the South Brunswick High School Honors Chamber Orchestra. He's been selected among applicants from 12 states to take part in the 2021 All Eastern Orchestra. This is a huge honor and recognition and kudos goes out to, to Colin, the family. And finally, one of our third grade Brunswick Acre students, Vihan Main, he received Grand Honors Award as part of the Johns Hopkins University Center for Talented Youth based on the SCAT that he took this past June. Vihan was in the top 9% of all test takers, over 15,000 worldwide. This is a very prestigious award and we are so proud of him. And he's only third grade, so we're gonna be proud of Vihan for a long time. One, one final reminder, uh, we're closed on Monday for President's Weekend. And um, again, again, welcome to our three members. Glad to have you back and it really is glad. <clears throat> it's good to be here. It's good to be public. And um, can't say I love wearing the mask or the two masks, I should say. But um, it's worth being here and if it takes wearing a mask to be here and socially distance, well worth it. Welcome back everyone. Thank you, Mr. Mason. Thank you. Uh, moving along uh, to, like uh, uh, Mr. Federer said, we're moving to the rec recognition part of the meeting at South Brunswick High School 2021 uh, National Merit Semifinalists, Student Scholars and Honor uh, Educators. Jen. Uh,
thank you. Yes. So it's a big night for um, us. This is something that we do every year, and we usually have an audience filled with kids. So a little bit different, but I have to tell you that the high school did an awesome job pulling this off. And uh, shout out to Peter, and he tells me that Ramona Baker and Lisa Maganella had a large part of putting this together. So tonight, without further ado, board members that were up here, if you want to go sit up front, we can do that. Um, but I turn it over to Reggie. I think he's going to start the film. Thank you. Good evening, members of the Board of Education, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we are fortunate to honor a distinguished group of students and teachers virtually. These students are recognized for their performance on the Preliminary Scholastic Aptitude Test, or PSAT, which is also the National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. Being recognized by the National Merit Organization is truly one of the most prestigious honors a high school student can achieve. National Merit semifinalists represent the top 16,000 of the 1.6 million students who took the PSAT at the same time they did. I am pleased to say that South Brunswick High School has 15 semifinalists this year. We also have the distinction of having 60 commended students, and they will also be honored virtually at two upcoming board meetings. Keeping with a treasured South Brunswick tradition, we invited our students to identify and honor outstanding educators who have made a significant impact on their lives. Each student has inscribed a message for his or her honoree in a book specifically selected for the teacher. Since we are hosting this recognition virtually, I will read excerpts from their messages to the teachers at the conclusion of this presentation. These books will be given to each teacher in person at a later date. Additionally, certificates of appreciation from President Barry Nathanson and the Board of Education will be mailed home to all of our honorees. Before we begin, I would like to thank my secretary, Ms. Ramona Baker, for coordinating this special honors program, Ms. Marianne Murphy for her work with the certificates, and Ms. Lisa Manganello for creating our slides and producing this amazing video presentation. As we start our program, I thought I'd share some of the colleges and universities that our semifinalists apply to for admission. I would like to now introduce our honorees as well as the teachers being recognized. Our first highlight is on Adrian Gaspar. In the fall, Adrian plans to major in biomechanical engineering. One of his proudest accomplishments at SBHS was being a starter on the varsity wrestling team for all four years. One fun fact about him, he loves grapes. We would like to also recognize his proud parents, Maria Dominique and Anand Gaspar. Adrian would like to honor Ms. Paige Rimmer, who teaches at Crossroads South. Our next spotlight is on Akash Jain. In the fall, Akash will attend the University of Pennsylvania, majoring in computer science. One of his proudest accomplishments at SBHS was lettering for the swim team in his junior year. One fun fact about him, he makes a mean guacamole dip. His proud parents, Nitu and Jitendra Jain. And Akash would like to honor Mr. Robert Masterton, who teaches at Crossroads South. Our next spotlight is on Mehar Johal. In the fall, Mehar will be moving on to major in computer science. One of Mehar's greatest accomplishments at SBHS is his website, HS Navigator developed to assist counselors and high school students with academic interests and opportunities. One fun fact about him, Mehar loves to cook, especially breads, biscuits, and pizza. I'd like to recognize his proud parents, Interpal and Pravit Johal. Mehar would like to honor Dr. Masood Chakar, who teaches at the high school. Our next spotlight is on Banditha Krishnan. In the fall, Banditha will be moving on to major in economics and finance. One of her greatest accomplishments at SBHS was receiving a diploma in music education through the Royal Academy of Music. One fun fact about her, she loves listening to rock music and can memorize song lyrics within minutes. I'd like to recognize her proud parents, Krishna and Raman and Vidya Krishnan. Banditha would like to honor Mr. Matt Miller, 
with teachers at the high school. Our next spotlight is on Aditya Magesh Kumar. In the fall, Aditya will be moving on to major in computer science. One of his greatest accomplishments at SBHS was winning the GMC title with the varsity tennis team. One fun fact about him, he was selected to be a ball boy at the 2019 US Open. We'd like to recognize his proud parents, Nareja Magesh Kumar, Magesh Kamalakanen. Aditya would like to honor Mr. Scott Lawrence, who teaches at the high school. Our next spotlight is on Nandita Nagarajan. In the fall, Nandita will be moving on to major in electrical engineering. One of her proudest high school moments was when she and her partner placed first at Yale University Science Olympiad Invitational. One fun fact about her, she enjoys singing and has had solo performances in Indian classical concerts around the New York metropolitan area. I'd like to also recognize her parents, Srikanath and Subha Nagarajan. Nandita would like to honor Mr. Stephen Dentler, who teaches at the high school. Our next spotlight is on Saisha Naguru. In the fall, Saisha will be moving on to major in public health and biology. One of her proudest moments was being elected as the New Jersey FBLA State Secretary, working with FBLA members from chapters across the state. One fun fact about her, Saisha has a second degree black belt in karate and is training for her third degree. I'd like to also recognize her proud parents, Vinaya Naguru, and Sathya Bandari. Saisha would like to honor Mr. Michael Poot, who teaches at the high school. Our next spotlight is on Jeffrey Paul Raj. In the fall, Jeffrey will be moving on to major in computer science and math. One of his proudest moments was when he placed eighth at the National FBLA Conference for the Coding and Programming Competition. One fun fact about him, he enjoys playing the bass guitar during his free time. I'd like to recognize his proud parents, Yesudasan, Paul Raj, and Jancy Yesudasan. Jeffrey would like to honor Mr. Stephen Schiff, who teaches at the high school. Our next spotlight is on Vikrant Pulapati. In the fall, Vikrant will be moving on to major in computer science. One of his proudest moments was receiving a certificate in Telugu language from a prestigious Indian university. One fun fact about him, he can speak five languages including Telugu, French, Norwegian, and Swedish. I'd like to also recognize his proud parent, Madhavi Devathi. Vikrant would like to honor Mr. Ramon Quinones, who teaches at the high school. Our next spotlight is on Adi Rain. In the fall, Adi will be moving on to major in physics. One of his proudest moments in high school was getting a perfect score on his SAT. One fun fact about him, Adi loves to play chess. We would like to recognize his proud parents, Pooja Puar and Milan Rain. Adi would like to honor Mr. Gordon Barnes, who teaches at the high school. Our next spotlight is on Neil Shah. In the fall, Neil will be moving on to major in computer science. One of his proudest moments was competing in an eight-week software engineering internship at Bloomberg during which he collaborated with others to develop an interactive web application. A fun fact, Neil is a fan of basketball and football. His favorite teams are the Dallas Mavericks and the New York Giants. We'd like to recognize his proud parents, Urbashi and Mahendra Shah. Neil would like to honor Mr. Matthew Kostovny, who teaches at the high school. Our next spotlight is on Pranavan Sri Ranganathan. In the fall, Pranavan will be moving on to major in biology. One of his proudest moments was being a varsity soccer player as a junior and being selected as team captain this year. A fun fact about him, Parnovan got second place in a sausage eating contest. I'd like to recognize his proud parents, Skanda and Darshini Sriranganathan. Parnovan would like to honor Ms. Holly Studzinski, a teacher at the high school. Our next spotlight is on Saurav Suresh. In the fall, Saurav will be moving on to major in computer science. One of his proudest moments was working with the World Resources Institute to help identify land conflicts in India and matching them to mediating policies. One fun fact that Saurav shared, he has never broken a bone in his body. 
like to recognize his proud parent, Saurav Suresh. Saurav would like to recognize Mr. Peter Honig, a teacher at the high school. Now, our next spotlight is on Shriya Vupala. In the fall, Shriya will be moving on to major in biomedical engineering. One of her proudest moments was writing a research paper about the neurological effects of SARS-CoV-2. The long-term effects she predicted from reading the MRI scans of real patients ended up being accurate. One fun fact about Shriya is that she is a martial arts instructor at Master Peter's Academy of Martial Arts. I'd like to recognize her proud parents, Sridhar and Anitha Vupala. And tonight, Shriya will be honoring Mr. Anthony Grasso, a teacher at the high school. Our next spotlight is on Ivan Wang. In the fall, Ivan will be moving on to major in computer science. One of his proudest moments was becoming one of the captains of the Science Olympiad team. One fun fact about Ivan, he enjoys going on long runs in the morning. I'd like to recognize his proud parents, Lu Jin Wang and Jing Su. And tonight, Ivan will be honoring Mr. Kenneth Sadowski, a teacher at the high school. To conclude our virtual presentation, I would like to paraphrase and share a few excerpts that our amazing students wrote to our honored teachers. You always teach in a way that keeps us engaged. Your patience and calm demeanor in all situations, even when we wouldn't stop doing TikTok dances, is something I hope to emulate whenever I work with other people. Besides your engaging teaching style, your forthright nature and humor made the class an exciting part of my day. Aside from all the physics you've taught me, you also showed me how to be a better student. You taught me early on the work ethic to succeed and gave me the passion to continue to pursue my interests in science. Your class has made me a more compassionate and enthusiastic learner of history. You have become one of my mentors, and I remember how you used to call me out whenever I apologized unnecessarily. This has helped me become more confident in myself. Thank you for instilling a sense of hope and courage in me. Thank you for teaching me to always look on the bright side, which has been a guiding principle in my life. And lastly, thank you for always believing in me. Our students wrote full inscriptions in books that our teachers will definitely appreciate and treasure. I honestly cannot wait to present these books to them. This concludes tonight's presentation. Again, congratulations to our 15 semifinalists, their families, and our honored teachers. Please join me in a virtual round of applause for them. Be healthy and safe, and go Vikings. Wow, fantastic. Thank you, Jen, and thank you, uh, Mr. Varela. Uh, it's to the new board members, one of the uh, proud moments for this board and, and for myself as president is always the recognition part of the meeting. And unfortunately, the kids and the parents aren't here tonight. So, so moving along, we're moving to the public uh, portion of our meeting. Since there's no one here at the meeting, there are people on Zoom. So we'll be going to that. The, Bo the Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters of community interest. Complete copies of the rules that govern this portion of the meeting are available so the public at, at the back of the room or uh, you can obtain an advanced copy by contacting the board office during regular board, uh, business hours. We re reserve the right to limit each speaker to not more than three minutes. It is our plan to listen to each member of the public. We will note all questions and comments made. Once all questions and comments from all members of the public are made, the Board of Education will respond, if necessary, to questions or comments in the most timely and effective manner available. 
Please consider not repeating comments and questions made by other members of the public. I ask that you state your name, place of residence, or your group affiliation. Mr. Pulaski, do we have anyone raising their hands on Zoom? We do. We have five attendees currently raising their hands. Okay. Start with uh, Nora. You could unmute yourself, Nora. You're ready to talk. Thank you. Nora, please. Yes, hello. Um, thank you uh, all so much for your time tonight. Uh, first off, I wanted to say thank you guys so much for um, getting us through this first week of hybrid. I know it was rough on a lot of people. Um, and I, I think the way that it was carried out was um, very, uh, was very um, professional and whatnot. Uh, so I wanted to say thank you for that. Although I would quickly um, like to make this suggestion and this suggestion also came from one of my friends uh, Rohan, who's a sophomore, I'm a senior, I thought Brunswick like High School, um, but uh, we were both thinking that it might be more beneficial for us students if the latter portions of the day, um, basically from um, one o'clock to two o'clock, where we normally have those two extra class days, I know like if we, if you guys took those out entirely, every single day would pretty much be a half day, which uh, wouldn't necessarily be allowed, but I think like if those, if at least some of that time was replaced and made into office hours, um, which I think was a very beneficial part of remote learning, I think if that happened, um, it would be uh, very good for students if students could just go visit uh, teachers who they, whose class they were having trouble in, or if they could just um, maybe just talk with their teachers and have that very special one-on-one -on -one time, which I think helps a lot of students succeed. I think if we could bring that back in some form, I think that would be very helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment, Nora. Next up, we have Rohan. Thank you so much board members for planning out this week pretty well with all of the things that have been going wrong lately. Um, I would also like to build off of that. I know you can't switch back to 9 a.m., but you started a committee, which is amazing. And thank you so much for that. Um, I was also trying to build off of what Nora said, where maybe instead of just having like those set two blocks where it can't be like changed, where like, for example, I'm in a gym and I'm writing a paragraph or something, which I don't feel is needed, I can focus my time more on a subject that I want like one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher, like I used to have like a week prior. That's all. And I love your time, Mr. Scott Fetter. It's really um, nice for this month as it's like Heart Disease Association and Valentine's Day. Thank you. Scott, thanks you for his comment and your comment. Uh, next up, we have Laura. Laura, are you with us? All right. And we're going to go with um, Akash. Hello, my name is Akash Kanan. I am from Monmouth Junction, New Jersey, a member of the South Brunswick High School class of 2018 and a current Rider University student. I would like to give my shout outs and congratulations to my friends, Pranavan and Nandita for making it to a national merit semifinalist for performance on the PSAT. And a shout out goes to Mr. Zinsky and all of my teachers, including Mr. Masterton and Mr. Grasso. I would also want to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day and my thoughts and suggestions for the high school is to come up with uh, orientation and different types of summer institute programs, like transition to high school. Thank you. Thank you, Akash. Thank you, uh, Laura, are you available? No. We have Zoya. Hi, Zoya, you want to say? 
Yeah. Um, I forgot to mention this earlier, but um, I was reminded of it again. Uh, there is actually a GoFundMe set up for Emily Murillo. It has met its goal, but if any member of the community would like to help contribute to the GoFundMe, um, you can just type up the loss of a child, Emily Murillo Memorial Fund, and you can find the GoFundMe and help the family during this difficult time. I just wanted to let the community know about that as a way to help out. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kimberly Gutierrez. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Kimberly Gutierrez and I am speaking as a parent in the South Brunswick School District. Um, I wanna use this time tonight to speak about the change in instruction as the district has um, shifted to hybrid learning. My concern is that teachers are being stretched very thin as they are expected to teach students both in their classroom and on Zoom simultaneously. Um, now this is at no fault of teachers. I think that teachers are giving more than they ever have been before. And if we, you know, if that was ever possible to do um, already, but they are. And the fact is that even with teachers giving all they've got, uh, one person cannot be expected to be in two places at one time and truly give 100% of themselves while teaching students in person and virtually. So as a parent in the district, I propose that the district um, consider a different instructional dynamic, whatever that might be, other than the one that's currently in place right now, which is not providing in-person or virtual students with the attention during learning time that they deserve. Thank you for your comment. That's it. We have a cash one more time. Akash, Hello, quick. this is a cash speaking. Change of topic. I would like to give my suggestions on uh, middle school and elementary school students. Elementary school students can uh, have a transitional course, like if they have an orientation for kindergarten or new students, let them have a summer institute, just like how it worked for the high school, because elementary school students will work so hard after in summer institute and that summer institute and transition will make them even more confident, not just in elementary school, but throughout their high school years and middle school years and even beyond. I feel that's a good change and this will help South Brunswick School District become the top school district in New Jersey. And this is coming from Akash Khan and happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, motion to close public portion. Moved by uh, Mr. Scaletti, second by uh, Lisa Rogers. All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you. Uh, moving along to uh, board comments and communications. Anyone? Lisa, go ahead. Yeah, um, just uh, very quick, if uh, the public hasn't seen it yet, you might want to venture onto Twitter and uh, see Miss Lisa Manganello's um, tweet. She had posted um, in the South Brunswick High School library a beautiful uh, silhouette of Amanda Gorman um, in her yellow jacket and her red headband, along with one of the most famous parts or phrases of her poem. And it's on a column in the, um, in the high school. Beautiful. And she had actually tweeted with and tagged Amanda Gorman, and Amanda Gorman retweeted. And I just think that's really cool. And uh, she, the, the tweet has gone viral. But the reason I'm really bringing it up is you need to see it. It's an absolutely beautiful um, piece of art, in my eyes, um, for the library. And congratulations to Lisa. I think it's an absolutely beautiful piece. So I just wanted to let the public know. Yeah, I'm sorry, I skipped. So Lisa got to get her board comments and um, board committee reports. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> well. <laughs> Anybody have board committee reports? No. Okay. Uh, uh, can I get a motion on uh, approval of tonight's action items, uh, 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 the consent agenda? Can I get a motion, please? Moved by Dr. Parker. I have a second. Second by Mrs. Meadow. Roll call, please. 
Dr. Raja Krishnan. Yeah. Mr. Raymond Keener. Mrs. Joyce Mehta. Yes. Mr. Mike Mitchell. You have the same on A1.1, please. Dr. Stephen Parker. Yes. Dr. Smith Raj. Uh, yes, abstaining from uh, A1.1. Why is she doing that? Mrs. Lisa Rogers. Yes. Mr. Joseph Scaletti. Yes. Mr. Barry Nagus. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, now board comments and communication. So Mrs. <laughs> Rogers spoke already. Well, I, I think I like that idea, so she doesn't have to speak. Don't have to speak anymore. <laughs> Mrs. Medico. Okay. Um, I would just like to um, send out hearty congratulations to all the students for the National Merit Semifinalists. Um, we're so incredibly proud of you. Hearty congratulations to all the educators who, who have been nominated. Um, you know, words fail me to praise you as much as I really could. Uh, you really do shape these students in more ways than you realize, and we couldn't be great, more grateful. We're so proud of the work that you do, especially in, especially in these challenging times. And congratulations to all the parents of the students as well um, who have supported them along the way. We are, as Mr. Nathanson said earlier, um, as a board, this is one of our proudest moments uh, when we manage, when we come here and we actually are able to um, congratulate them and to see the award ceremony. We couldn't do that this year, but you should know just um, how much we value their contribution and uh, how proud we are. Thank you. Anyone else? Just want to make a couple comments. Uh, uh, so for the people that didn't, don't know that uh, our athletics are being televised live on YouTube so you can you can get the schedule, and you can actually watch the basketball games uh, live and, and any other games that are uh, being played. So uh, it makes for interesting uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, also, uh, what else is on YouTube? There's there's a couple things on YouTube that are most notable. The, uh, the Winter Concert is actually on YouTube. Uh, for those that have attended it in the past, uh, it's an amazing event. And they didn't, uh, the, they were just as good on YouTube as in person. So I, I want to thank them for doing that too. So uh, that being said, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Moved by Mrs. Matter, second by Mrs. Rogers. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, good night, South Brunswick. And it's great to be live again.